Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another live community classroom with Michaels. We have our friend Tamara Kelly with us today to make this adorable graduation cap topper. My name is Renee L from Yarn Inspirations, and I'll be helping with any questions you might have during today's class. Please feel free to drop your questions in the chat and we'll make sure that Tamara answers them. While we're getting ready to kick things off, let us know where you're watching from. Over to you, Tamara. All right. Thanks so much, Renee. Hi, everybody. As she said, I'm Tamara from Moogly Blog, and we are making the Lily Sugar and Cream Crochet Graduation Cap Mason Jar Topper. Long title, but a really cute project. You can see it in the picture right there. This is made to fit a standard size mason jar. But the nice thing about this little hat is, like a lot of the hats we make for ourselves, it's worked top down. So if you need to adjust those decreases, decreases rather, to fit other sizes of jars, that's an opportunity you'll have while you're making the pattern. Now, as I said, it is made to fit a regular size mason jar, not the wide mouth kind, but the regular top, the uh, standard top, if you will. So these come in lots of different sizes. So again, if you wanted to recycle a jar rather than using a mason jar or you have one of the wide mouth jars, you'll want to have it on hand so you can sort of fit your cap on your jar as you go, just like we might try on a hat as we're crocheting it to make sure it fits. So let's go ahead. I'm going to pull on my hand camera here and we'll take a look at the supplies we need for this project. We're going to be using Lily Sugar and Cream. You can use two colors. Uh, the pattern calls for black and yellow, sort of traditional graduation cap colors, but lots of schools have their own colors too, so feel free to use whatever colors suit you. You'll also need a USG 4 millimeter crochet hook. I've got one right here. This one's by Susan Bates, one of the great ones with the bamboo handles. And of course, you'll want your standard crochet supplies, scissors and yarn needle. And you're also going to, I think, want some stitch markers for this pattern. I really like this style of stitch marker. These are by Susan Bates. Uh, they open up like little safety pins. And these are just really handy for making our corners with this pattern because we're working all in single crochet. So some of the stitches can get a little bit small. Now to top off, if you will, our topper, there is a little tassel for the traditional graduation tassel. So if you have a tassel maker, you could use one of those or simply use a piece of cardboard to create that tassel. We'll try and get to that here as we get towards the end of class today. So first things first, let me sort of push some things aside here. And I'm actually going to start here in a little bit lighter color, which will be a little bit easier for us to see our stitches here as we begin this pattern. So Lily Sugar and Cream, it seems to pull really well from the inside or the outside. So whichever part of the skein you can find the end to, you can go ahead and go with that one. And then we'll go ahead and start with our instructions. Were there any questions I could answer before we do get started with the actual crocheting? Nothing in the chat just yet. Okay, just wanted to make sure we didn't miss anything there right away. Okay, so this pattern begins with a slip knot on our hook, excuse me, not a slip knot on our hook with a magic circle. My bad. I've been making so many projects lately, I forgot to. Okay, yep, I've made making too many projects lately. I'm getting myself confused. MC here does not mean magic circle, it means main color. My apologies. We do start with a slip knot on our hook and chain two. Just taught a class yesterday with a similar start, so I got myself confused there momentarily. So we've got our main color and we chain two. If you wanted to, though, you could start this one with a magic circle. I was thinking yesterday when I was making my little step out for it that a magic circle would, in fact, work really well for this. Basically, we just want to work four single crochets in that first chain we made. So if you started with the magic circle instead, you'd work four single crochets into the magic circle. So I'm going to go right into that first chain I made for one single crochet, two single crochets. And as you work this many stitches into this chain, you're going to end up sort of working around the chain. So you can sort of tuck that tail right down in there if you like. There's three single crochets and then a fourth one right there. There we go. So you can see that's really put us right in that circle. And we are going to want that circle to be quite small. So again, if you wanted to start with a magic circle, you could, or you can just use that tail end to sort of cinch up that circle when you go to weave in your ends if you like. After we've made those four single crochets, one, two, three, four, we want to slip stitch to the top of the first one we made to finish our circle. As you can see, these are teeny tiny little stitches. So you really want to take your time and make sure to count, make sure that you slip stitched that fourth stitch. Then we're ready to start uh, round two. 
to our second round. We're going to start with a chain one, and then we're going to work three single crochets in each single crochet around. So we're really going to be squeezing those stitches in, and this is a great place to really start using those stitch markers. I'm gonna go ahead and set two right here so they're ready to use. I'm gonna start with my chain one. There we are, and we're going to go right back in that first stitch, the one we joined to, and put three single crochets in there. But I want to go ahead, these are tight little stitches because we're using a little hook to make our fabric quite stiff. So I do want to mark that very first single crochet of this round now. That will help me find it when I come back around and not get mixed up with any of the turning chains or slip stitches. So there's our first single crochet in our first stitch. Now we need two more in that stitch. So take your time. These are tight little stitches. I mentioned at the beginning we're using a G hook, which is a size smaller than is usually recommended for this yarn. And that's very much on purpose. We want to create a really stiff fabric so that the top of that graduation hat stays really nice and firm. So we've got three single crochets in the first stitch. We go to the next stitch and do the same thing. Oop, let's see. Sometimes we're making these tight little stitches. You just have to take a couple tries. There we go. One and two. Now it's easier to get in there. And three. There we go. So we've got three stitches in that single crochet. We go to the third one. Three single crochets in there. One and two and three. There we go. And now we've got one stitch left. This is why I say I really love using those stitch markers because if you just glance at it, it looks like there's two, but that one right there is the slip stitch. So we'll make these three stitches and then I'm going to go ahead and put a stitch marker in the last stitch. So that way I'll have the first and last stitch of the round marked. And I will know that the slip stitch is just a slip stitch. So there's our third single crochet. I split my yarn on that just a little bit. So I'm going to remake that last stitch right there. There we go. So now we should have a total of 12 stitches here for round 12 or round two. So I want to go ahead and put that stitch marker right in that final stitch before I do my slip stitch. Just makes it a little bit easier to find those stitches as we work around. Come on over to that first marked stitch and we'll put our slip stitch right in there. There we are. We'll pull that nice and tight. Again, we are making a really nice firm fabric here. So we want our stitches to be really, really tight and kind of small. Now we're going to begin with round three or our third round. And our third round sort of starts the uh I would say the repeat that's going to take us through most of this top of the pattern until we begin our decreases and start working the underside of the hat. Right now, what we're making is a big flat square, just like this one. This one's actually navy blue, um, but you can see we're going to be working out in rounds of single crochet here, and we're really going to establish that pattern here in round three. So for this one, I'm going to recommend that you grab a couple more stitch markers because you may have seen, may have noticed when I pulled up this one, I've got a stitch marker in each of these corners. And it just makes it so much easier here as we begin our repeat that begins with round three. So to begin, we start with a chain of two. And this is a little different. This chain of two is going to be the chain two at our first corner. So I'm going to go ahead and move this first stitch marker up right around this chain two. Just put it right over the chain two like that. Go ahead and close it up so it's not going anywhere. There we are. Then what I am going to do is I am going to work a single crochet in the first stitch. Now, that one will be right there. So we're gonna go ahead and single crochet right in that first stitch. That's the same one that we joined to. There we are. So then we are going to start the part that um, is enclosed in the brackets. So we know we're starting a repeat. We work a single crochet in each of the next two single crochets. So let's do that first. One, then two. Then there's a section in parentheses. One single crochet, chain two, one single crochet in the next stitch. 
So because it's all in the parentheses there, we know all that goes in that next stitch. So that's a single crochet. Chain two, one, two. This is going to be our second corner. So we can grab another one of those stitch markers and put it right around that chain two. There we are. And then single crochet right back in that same stitch. All right, that brings us to the end of our bracket. And it says to do that whole section of the bracket three times. So we've done it once, we're gonna do it twice more. We start again at the beginning of the bracket one single crochet in each of the next two single crochets. So one, and then two. There we are. I'm gonna pull up a little bit more yarn. I have to do that every once in a while. I like to keep my yarn pretty loose as it's coming off the ball so that I don't create a lot of extra tension there. Although we are working tightly for these stitches. There we are, just a little bit easier on the hands that way. So we've worked those single crochets in the first two. That brings us back to the section in the parentheses. So that's one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet in the next stitch. So we go right to that next stitch for a single crochet, chain two. We're gonna put our third stitch marker right around that chain two. And single crochet right back in that same stitch. You can see how this is really starting to square up our little circle. So then we've got one more repeat for that whole section there in the brackets. One single crochet in each of the next two stitches. One. And two. And then the parentheses. Single crochet. Chain two. And I'm gonna go ahead I'll grab one more stitch marker here for my little bowl for now and put that one right around our fourth corner there. Then I want to make sure I come back and single crochet right back in that same stitch. Finish off that corner. There we go. And then we go back to our instructions. We've finished off the three times about the brackets. So now we one single crochet in each of the next two single crochets and that makes sense because there's our stitch marker right there indicating that's the last stitch so one and two i'm going to go ahead and get that stitch marker on out of our way right now and then this hat pattern has us do something that normally we're trying to avoid doing in a pattern we're going to purposefully single crochet in the joining slip stitch Normally, when we're working in the round, we use those stitch markers to make sure we don't work into the slip stitch. This pattern has us work into that slip stitch. It's kind of a unique move, but it works out really well to make this really nice firm square. So we're going to go right into that slip stitch, just as if it was another stitch. Make our single crochet. Now that's the last stitch of this round. We finish it up by slip stitching to that chain two space. So that puts us right back in that chain two space like so to begin round four. So rounds four through nine just continue to expand on this square. So let me see what time it is here. My clock decided to turn off on me. All right, we've got another five minutes. So let's try and get through a little bit more of the fourth round so you can see how that continues to grow, to grow out until we want to get to those decreases. So to begin our fourth round, and just like Rounds four through nine, basically, we're going to chain two to start. We can move that first stitch marker right on up. This is our new corner here for round four. Then we want to single crochet right back in that chain two space. That's how we're going to begin all the rest of these rounds, rounds four through nine. Then we single crochet in each stitch across until we get to that next corner. So the pattern has actually written out every row. So if you want to double check and make sure you're doing it right, there are the specific numbers for each row. So for instance, this one, we would single crochet in the next, um, it would be the next four single crochets that gets us to the next corner. And then of course the next row, it'll be six, eight, 10, et cetera. But basically for all of these, you just single crochet in each stitch until you get to that next corner. There we are. We're right back there. You can see right at the corner that chain two. So we go right into that chain two for another single crochet. 
chain two, single crochet. We put another corner right in that corner. We've got that new chain two. I'm going to move that stitch marker right on up. And then single crochet right back in that chain two space. So having these stitch markers indicates to us not only when we're getting to a corner to really pay attention and make sure we stop at the right point before we get to that corner, but it also helps us find those chain two spaces. And when you're working with tiny little stitches like that, especially in darker colors, it can be really difficult to find that chain two space and make sure you're not accidentally working into the chain itself. So having those little stitch markers just to help mark that space and may even help you lift it up and make it a little bigger for yourself so you can get your hook in there can be really, really handy. So I'm just crocheting in each stitch until we get to that corner again. When I get to that corner chain two space, I want a single crochet, chain two, and single crochet right in the chain two space. So there's our first one. I'll chain two, and I'll move our stitch marker right on up. There we are. And single crochet right in that same chain space. So if you have any questions about how to make this top section of the hat here, definitely drop that in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Um, I think oops, after this round, we'll move on to doing the decreases that begin in round 10 or well, there's kind of a work even round first, but we'll start pick back up with round 10 here in a few minutes. So again, if you have any questions about how to make this square top portion, please do let me know. I'll be sure to read those out and answer them. All right, we've come to another corner. So we're going to do one more corner here with a single crochet, chain two, move that last stitch marker on up. And then you can single crochet right back in that chain two space. Don't forget to do that. That brings us back to our last straight side here. So we just single crochet in each one of these stitches. And remember, we started with that chain two. So if we come back and just look closely here, there we go. I've got my corner made right there, single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Then I've single crocheted in the next four stitches, one, two, three, four. But now, rather than single crocheting back in that chain two space, we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to single crochet into the join, into that slip stitch join right there. Pretty unique pattern, but a very clever way of then when we slip stitch right in that chain two space, it puts us right back in the corner. It's a way I hadn't seen it done before, so it was really neat to discover it in this pattern. So as I say, this is through round four. Rounds five, six, seven, eight, and nine are all the same thing. You put the corners in your chain two spaces and single crochet in each stitch across. So now if I pull up this one right here, I'm gonna need a little bit more yarn pulled up for this one. Let me set the Taylor one aside a little bit, we can see how much bigger that square has gotten. So let me pull up some yarn here and then we'll find our little loop. Take my stitch marker out of the loop. It was holding open my working loop there so it wouldn't actually accidentally pull out on me anywhere. Anyway, rather, let's see. Let's go ahead and look at this one. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rounds made here in our navy blue. So this is about four inches wide. Um, this pattern does include a gauge. It also includes instructions to stuff a piece of cardboard into the top of the hat to make it stiffer if you want to. On a small project like this though, let's be honest, most of us aren't going to take the time to make a gauge swatch. So if you wanted to do the stuffing with cardboard bit, I'd say go ahead and make your square. If you need to add another round, you can to get to four inches. If you um, you know, you need to do something else, you can cut just a slightly different size of cardboard if need be to fit. You can definitely sort of adjust this one as you go. Like I say, you're going to want to have your jar on hand too, so you can sort of try on its little hat as we crochet. So let me turn my pattern over here. We are going to go ahead and move on to the 10th round right here, which is on the second page of the pattern. And this round, we work in the back loops only, and it says it right at the beginning of the round, so that's going to be true for the whole round. After that, we switch back to both loops for round 11. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to pull up actually our lighter square here where it's a little bit easier to see. And let's look at our square. This is the right side. This is the side I've been crocheting from. So this would be the back side. 
always easier to tell because our little tail's still hanging out there. And when we look at our project, when we crochet, normally we go under both of those top two loops. But when we talk about the front loop and the back loop, let me pull up my hook here so it's a little easier to point. The front loop is the loop that's always closest to you, the crocheter, and the back loop is the one that's always furthest away. So if you encounter this in another pattern sometime, and it's something where maybe you're working from the wrong side, now this is the front loop and that's the back loop. So it's not about the actual which loop is which on the stitch itself. It's rel it, it's like I say, it's relative to you, the crocheter. It's which one's literally closest to you or furthest away from you as you are stitching. So if you were to go under the front loop only, you would insert your hook just under that front loop for your stitches, but we're going to be going under the back loop only. So we're actually going to insert our hook right in the middle of that V and just go under that back loop to do our stitching. What this does is it actually creates a really nice lip. That unused front loop creates a really beautiful ridge along our work and sort of turns our stitches down, which is going to start giving us the shape for the hat. Let me set this one aside. I'm hoping our lighting here will pick up on some of these colors if I get a little bit closer here. I noticed earlier it was adjusting to be a little brighter, but it just wanted to white balance for me here. Let's see. See if we can get that a little bit closer here. Okay. So beginning in round 10, we are going to be working in the back loops only for this round, and we're going to slip stitch in the next single crochet twice. So that means we have slip stitched into that chain two space. I'm actually gonna, that's a lot darker on camera today than it was showing up yesterday. I apologize, folks. Let me pull up the lighter one to take these next couple stitches in here so that they're a little bit easier to see. Stitch count's not gonna be right, but they're going to be a lot easier to see, I think, on this lighter color. So we are in that last corner there, the first corner, if you will. And to begin round 10, we're going to slip stitch in that next single crochet twice. But again, it's back loops only. So we're going to just ignore the rest of that corner and come over to that first single crochet right there. We're going to go under just that back loop. So you put that hook right in the middle of your stitch, yarn over and pull up that loop and pull through to slip stitch, just like that. And then you do the same thing in the next one, like so. And then we're going to continue with our instructions from there. So now that you've been able to see that a little bit better, let's see what it looks like here on our navy blue guy here. So I'm going to come over to that first single crochet. I'm going to go right in the center of that, go under that back loop only for one single uh, slip stitch rather, and then a slip stitch in the next single crochet. There we are. So that puts us in a little bit on that side. And then we begin with a chain one. And then we're going to single crochet in the same stitch as the last slip stitch. So the same one you slip stitched into. But remember, this whole round, we're just doing back loop only. Put one single crochet there, and then single crochet in each of the next 13 single crochets. So that's going to take us most of the way across here. So we want to stay in that back loop only, but we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and oop, in there, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and yarn got caught 13 okay so that puts us with one single crochet right before our chain two so we go back to our instructions and we're going to single crochet two together skipping that chain two space so i'm going to go ahead and get that stitch marker right on out of the way from now on i don't we're not going to be having any corners we're going to sort of round it out so we're going to go into the back loop only of this first single crochet on one side and yarn over and pull up a loop. Then we're going to skip that chain two. See if I can get the right angle on it here. There we are. Come to that first single crochet on this side. Go under just that back loop, yarn over and pull up a loop. 
And at this point, I recommend you kind of push up on your fabric a little bit so that we start going underneath when we yarn over and pull through all three to finish. And that's really going to sort of curve down that side there. There we go. That's a good angle. You can see how that's really sort of pushing that right on down. Then our instructions say uh, single crochet again in each of the next 14. So again, we want to make sure that we do that in the back loop. And that's going to take you all the way across until we've got that one stitch again before the corner. So we can do another single crochet two together there in the corner. So as I work these back loops across again, if you have any questions, please let us know in the chat and I'll be happy to answer those as best I can. We can see hopefully there it goes something about the light when I get my hand up there, it turns and we're able to see those stitches just a little bit better. Also in the chat, please, please do let us know where you're tuning in from today. We always love seeing where everybody's tuning in from across the country and around the world. We got a few off the top. I can read through just so we can say hi to everyone. So we have Paula here from Indianapolis. Hi, Paula. Hi, Paula. We have Jill from Whitesboro, New York. And hi. Monica's here from Rockledge, Florida. We've got folks go. from Gainesville, all over. Oh, and hello from Washington. Hi, Sam. Hi. Thanks so much for joining us today. I don't know if you guys have graduates in your own families, but I've got an eighth grade graduate this uh, this year, so that's pretty exciting here. We've got somebody from California. Awesome. All right, so. We're back at that corner. We're at our next corner. So I just wanted to highlight this. I'm going to pull up a loop on that first stitch on the one side, drop that yarn stitch marker, rather jump over here, get that up there. That second single crochet, the one right on the other side of the chain two. yarn over and pull up our loop. Go ahead and push up on that fabric just a little bit before we yarn over and pull through all three to finish that one. Then we just find that next stitch on that side and continue back loop only single crochet across um, the printed pattern. Yes, absolutely. They can drop that hopefully here in the chat for you. It is a free pattern on yarnspirations.com. And if you are watching this later on YouTube, that is the Lily Sugar and Cream Crochet Graduation Cap Mason Jar Topper. Definitely a little bit of a long one, but I'm sure if you just Googled Lily Sugar and Cream graduation jar topper, it would pop right up too. And for those watching lives, it is now in the chat. Alrighty. We're almost that third corner. This one just takes a little bit of time here, working our way across. Working into that back loop only again for each one of these stitches in round 10. We're at our third corner here, almost to the end. So we want to make sure we get that decrease, go into that first stitch right before the corner, drop that stitch marker, find the single crochet there right after the corner, go in that back loop only and pull up a loop, push that top up, yarn over and pull through all three to finish. And then finally, we've got that fourth side here. And the great thing is, we are decreasing at this point, so each round is going to get a little bit quicker. There we go, but we just need to get all the way around our little cap here. Let's see. And then Renee, can you help me keep an eye on the time? My uh, clock does not want to stay on today. So if you could just let me know when we're getting closer to Sure can. Sorry, I accidentally just full screen and I couldn't find myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right now it is 131. Okay, excellent. Thank you. I just want to make sure we can get through as much as we can. It's a small project, but it's a lot of small stitches, so it does take a bit of time. So now we are coming up here. Let's see. Yes, this is our last stitches here. What we want to do is when we oop, let me get back on centered on camera here and get that to show up. There we go. We get to that last stitch here on that final side. We want to make sure that we do the same thing that we go into the back loop only of that one. 
and then we're going to jump over here where we began and that first slip stitch is where we want to work the second half of that single crochet two together there let's see if we can get that to show up a little better my lighting's being a little finicky today basically we want to close up that final corner there pull through all three of there and then we can join at the slip stitch to that very first single crochet of the round so after that we've got some decreases that really start to pull in our hat but you can see hopefully when the lighting cooperates with us that it is really starting to pull in here with that last round it's starting to make sort of almost a box at this point if we wanted to keep crocheting even in fact we could make a really nice little gift box so if you need a matching set that's one other thing you can do but let's move on for now with round 11. we're going to start with a chain one and we're going to be working again in the both loops now so until it tells us to only work in one particular loop we can always assume from now on working in both loops we are going to um excuse me not start with a chain one just an automatic thing i did there we're going to slip stitch into that next stitch first so we go right to that next stitch and slip stitch there we are then we chain one and single crochet in that same stitch as our slip stitch and then kind of the same thing as we did last time but we're still going to be decreasing at these corners so now we need to work a single crochet in each of the next 11 single crochets so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and at this point you really will need to just kind of keep counting each one of these out and now we begin the part in the parentheses and we repeat the parentheses section three times so the first thing we do is single crochet three together so that means we're going to go into the next stitch yarn over and pull up a loop go into the next stitch yarn over and pull up a loop and go into the next stitch and yarn over and pull up a loop so when we single crochet three together you should have four loops on your hook before you yarn over and pull through all four loops to finish it and that is going to give us a really nice sharp decrease right there then our repeat still within the uh, parentheses there says one single crochet in each of the next 12 single crochets so let's go ahead and do that one two three four five six seven eight Oop, that one again eight nine ten eleven and twelve so that was our first repeat within the parentheses and we start back at the beginning single crochet three together go into the next stitch pull up a loop go into the next stitch pull up a loop go into the next stitch and pull up a loop four loops on our hook we yarn over and pull through all four loops to finish the stitch then we finish our repeat with a single crochet in each of the next 12 stitches so one two three four five oops, five six seven eight nine ten oops, let me try it again ten eleven and twelve that finishes the second time of the repeat so we start again at the beginning single crochet three together and now i'm going to give you another little thing you can do with your stitch markers that will help you in the next few rounds i'm going to go ahead and finish this single crochet three together this time i'm going to go ahead and mark that decrease and you can go ahead and back mark all your decreases if you want to but i'll explain why i've marked that here on our next one, round so let's get a little bit more here. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and a little bit more yarn. 12. Okay, so that finishes the last repeat there inside the parentheses, but there's a little bit left for this line. We single crochet three together in the next two single crochets and the slip stitch join. So that means we go into the next stitch. And when you go into the next stitch, the center one of each of these decreases should be the decrease of the previous row. And then we find that first slip stitch it should be right there. Yarn over and pull up our loop. We've got four loops on the hook, so we can yarn over and pull through all four. And again, I'm going to go ahead and mark this decrease. Then to finish round 11, we simply join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet of the round. There we are. Get that nice and tight. We want a nice tight join there. So as you can see, hopefully, this is really starting to fold over our work. Those decreases at the corner, really pull in those sides. And for the next several rounds, rounds 12, uh, let me just double check here, rounds 12, 13, and uh, yes, yeah, so rounds 12 and 13, we're going to be doing basically the same thing. What we're going to do is you're going to single crochet in each stitch. When you get to the stitch right before the stitch marker or the stitch right before the previous rounds decrease, that's where you're decreasing again. One, two, and three. So that decrease stays right in the center. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know and I can try and explain it a little bit more thoroughly. But basically, rounds 12 and 13 are the same thing. We're just continuing to decrease three stitches in each corner down to one to really pull the top of our cap over. And if you choose to go ahead and stuff it with cardboard, you may want to go ahead and put the cardboard in there before you get too far, you know, with those decreases. It just makes it a little bit easier to get the cardboard in there ahead of time. But after you've worked um, through round 13, that brings you down to 36 stitches. So at that point, I would definitely go ahead and start trying it on your hat or on, oh, not on your hat, but trying it on your jar to make sure you haven't decreased too much. Or if you're using a wide mouth jar, that might be about where you want to stop your decreases. And that said, if you need to decrease a little bit more, you can kind of continue to do that in pattern as well. Uh, round 14 is a little bit different in the corners for that one rather than, um, or excuse me, that one doesn't have decreases just in the corners. That's one where we start working a little bit more in the circles. We've got single crochet two togethers, but we've already done those. We're just going to basically for round 14 here, single crochet in the first three, then single crochet two together and single crochet in the next seven stitches. That will be our repeat. And then we do another decrease and single crochet in the last four to join. That's where we're really going to start working into that circle that fits around the cap of our jar. Round 15 is worked even. After round 14, we don't decrease anymore. So that's where you definitely want to try it on to your jar and make sure it fits. Round 15 is in the front loops only. So if we pull back our small sample here that we can see a little bit better, when you work round 15, you want to stitch under just the front loop of each stitch. Again, Want to make sure the right side's facing us so we haven't turned our work at all in this pattern we're always working from the right side so you just go under the front loop only when you work the single crochets for round 15 and then round 16 is back to single crochet in each stitch around so those last few rounds right there get that centered there create just the little cap that fits right over your jar so as i say you want to have the jar available so you can sort of try that on and get just the right fit after that, the last thing to do is to make the tassel. I wanted to make sure we had enough time to go over that. So I'm going to go ahead and take a break and do the tassel. And if we've got more time, we'll come back and work a little bit more on the hat. But really, it is just single crochets from here on out. But for those who haven't made a tassel before, I want to make sure we went over that as well. So for this tassel, we're, I'm going to be using yellow. But again, you can use whatever colors you want. I know when I graduated from... Um, high school, our tassels had both colors of our high school in there, so you can definitely customize this portion to fit um, your specific graduate. But to make a tassel, um, there are tassel makers, of course, on the market, but all you really need is a piece of cardboard. 
and the bigger the cardboard, the longer the tassel you're going to make. So for this pattern, they recommend using a piece of cardboard that's about four inches um, wide or long, however you want to think about it. Um, but like I said, you could go longer or shorter, whatever works for you. And we are going to trim it up a little bit at the end too. Um, no matter how careful I am, my tassels always seem to need a little bit of a haircut at the end. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start pulling up some yarn here. It's still attached to my skein. I'm not going to cut the yarn at all, but I'm simply going to start wrapping around my cardboard. And for this pattern, they recommend wrapping 25 times around. So you can just kind of, I, I know I started at the bottom there. I just kind of like call that one when I get back to the top. Two, three, four, five, six. And however many you add is going to, you know, determine the fluffiness of, you, of your tassel. So if you wanted a fluffier tassel, you could go for more than 25. If you wanted a little bit of a thinner tassel, you could do fewer. Um, like I say, use a couple different colors of yarn here if you want to. In fact, let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's say we wanted to really, really customize our tassel here for our recipient. I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn right there. And then let's grab, let's grab some of this pretty light, lighter blue here and say those are our school colors here. Like I say, one of these fun things about this pattern is you really can customize it for whatever you want for your graduate. So let's see, we're going to start that again at the bottom. I'm just going to hold that in place with my hand. And I'm going to do about the same number of wraps with that one. Of course, with all the chatting, I've lost count. I've got some really pretty colors here together. We're just going to go ahead and put those right together, just wrapping them around. Now, when we've gotten to the point where we've got about 25 or so, we'll say, <laughs> we'll say that's close. Then we're going to go ahead and cut our yarn again, right there. Now I'm going to set that aside for just a moment. Leave it right there on my cardboard. I did want to. I do want to point out as I was wrapping it, I was wrapping it a little bit gently. It's not loose. It's definitely on the cardboard, all there together. But I'm not wrapping so hard that I'm crunching my cardboard down. We don't want it to be super tight on there. Just sort of gently around there not loose not too loose not too tight then we're going to take a couple more strands of yarn here it can be whichever color you want we want to have two of them about what do, what do they recommend in the pattern here oh they say 16 inches of yarn so they've got that's a pretty long one let's go ahead and cut 16 inches of yarn or so i'm just going to eyeball it and then we are going to, everybody does it a little bit differently. I was just kind of doing it the way I normally do it in my head here, but I'm going to check the instructions and make sure we do it their way. It says tie securely at one end with 16 inches length of yarn. So, yep, that's what I would have done too. We're going to take one of those lengths of yarn we've cut and slide it right underneath all of those loops. We're going to make sure we get underneath all of them and then just scooch it right to the top of the cardboard right there. Then I like to make some really, really tight knots here. So rather than just going like this, when you start to tie your shoes, you know, one time around, I think this is often called a surgeon's knot. We're going to go around one more time. Just those two twists rather than just one really do make this knot a lot more secure. And we can just pull that down really, really tight. We can sort of adjust it a little bit. We want it to be right at the top of our cardboard. We just want to get that as nice and tight as we can. And then I'm going to take another one. Same thing. Go around once, but then around again. And pull that down nice and tight. And these knots do not, in my experience, want to come out. Then what we're going to do is go ahead and we can cut across the other end. So this was the end where we had cut our ends before. We've got it tied at this end. We're going to come down to this end, and we're just going to slide our scissors right under that edge. And go ahead and start snipping across. The sharper the scissors, the easier this will be. Clearly, I need a little bit sharper ones. There we go. We go ahead and cut that off our cardboard. We can set that aside for next time. So now we need to take our second length of yarn, again, in whatever color you want to use. And, you know, 16 inches is a is a ballpark. You don't have to measure it out, just sort of eyeball it. 
And then what we're going to do is wrap around the tassel about three quarters of an inch from the tied end. So again, you don't have to break out your ruler. We can just eyeball it and put it where we want it, but we want to create the tie around the top, sort of creates the head to our tassel with all the little, I always think of them as little ghosts from when I was a little kid and you know, as a children, those crafts we made at Halloween with the little ghost tassels. So this is the head and then we've got all the body down here. So we just need to put his little necktie on him. So we can do that a couple different ways. Some people like to just start tying with these instructions from your inspirations. They want us to wrap, which does create a really nice look. So we're just gonna, as I say, eyeball it and just start wrapping it right around the head of the tassel itself. When I've got a couple, I like to make them really tight. Start getting them really nice and tight on there. A Little bit nicer look. We're just gonna wrap that around six times or until you think it looks good. All right, then we're going to go ahead and tie it again. We want to make sure we get the end that we're tying with, not one of our little pieces of tassel there. And then we want to get another really secure knot in here. We're going to pull that down nice and tight once, and then I'm going to do that same knot again. One and two. Pull that one down nice and tight right there. And now we've got a little bit of zhuzhing to make it look its absolute best. I'm going to pull out my yarn needle. The yarn needle is just like a sewing needle, but of course a little bit bigger for our yarn. I'm going to put the ends that I tied with, not my tassel ends. Those are all part of the dress of our tassel, if you will, just the ones we tied our knot with for our necktie, if you will. And I'm going to go ahead and put both of them on my yarn needle, because why not? There we go. Pull those through till they're about even. It's a little bit easier there. And then what I want to do is I want to send that yarn needle right down through the center of my tassel. I'm gonna start at the top where I've got my tied end and head toward the end where our cut ends are. This is just going to help secure and hide that knot a little bit more. And then we can incorporate these ends into our tassel. Why put them to waste? Go ahead and just pull those right through really give a nice hard yank on that knot. Try and get it underneath those wraps as best you can. And that will hold your tassel nice and secure. So the last thing to do at that point, make sure everything's sort of laid out really nicely, is we want to go ahead and do our trimming. So depending on how sharp your scissors are, um, you know, how evenly you cut across the bottom of the cardboard, and how much of a stickler you are for perfectly even ends, you might want to just trim off the ones that we tied our necktie with, or you might want to go back and trim all of these off really nicely. Um, I am not a hairdresser, so when I try and use it, do it with scissors, I always have a hard time. So if I have a lot of tassels and I really want them to look their absolute best, I will actually use a rotary cutter and a cutting mat to cut those off evenly. Um, so that's sort of a separate tutorial, but um, it is a great way to get really even edges on your tassels when you want them to be absolutely perfect. And of course you can pick those up at your local Michaels or on michaels.com. So after we have made our tassel here, then it's time to attach it to our hat. And I've got so many little pieces over here. Let me pull my hat back up. But we've got our corner made to our hat there. So you would simply take your yarn needle and you can sew that right into the corner of your hat using the pieces that we tied the very top there, the very top portion of our tassel there where we tied it together. We simply sew those right into the corner. And if we look at the picture, you can see, you can leave a little bit of space there if you want to, or you can tie it up real close, whatever you like to do to style it, you know, however you want your finished hat to look. So. We've got 10 minutes left, which I'm very happy to hear. I was worried that the tassel would take a little bit longer. So I'm going to go ahead and set that aside. And let's come back to our hat just a little bit more here. So we can work through a few more of those stitches together. Again, let me know if you have any questions. Um, Renee, is there anything I could answer here as we head back to our little hat? Um, nothing so far. I think you're just really thorough. <laughs> okay, great. Well, you know, it is a pretty simple pattern. It's all single crochets. We make a square and then we pull it back in. Um, I really do enjoy the way that this works and the way that those decreases work. I will say, you can see here, it's relatively stiff. It doesn't necessarily need the cardboard insert, 
but it is definitely an option if you wanted to add one. Um, again, I would just recommend if you don't want to, you know, worry about getting gauge, go ahead and make your big square and then you can cut your cardboard to fit your square and then slip that in here before you get done making your decreases before you really have to fold it to get it in there. So now let's go ahead and let's see, we would be on round 12. So we'll go ahead and continue with round 12 and we'll see how far we can get here before we run out of time. And see right there is the stitch I slip stitched to. A little easier to see now. All right. Um. Let's see. Oh, it does. We had a comment come up. Sorry, we had a question for those following along at home. Um. It says in the picture it looks like it's attached to the top center, and you're right. I had not noticed that before. In the instructions, it simply says attached hassle to top of cap as shown in photo. So great spotting. I sorry I didn't catch your name, but. Wonderful eagle eyes you saw right there. If you look very carefully, it does look like it's attached to the center of the cap. So you could attach to the center of the cap too, or the corner, you know, whatever. It's your project, put it wherever you want. Um, but you could definitely leave those long tails up there. And then you've kind of got that fun, you know, pass the tassel over action from actual graduation. So that would definitely be um, the way to do it here as shown in the photos, or if you want to sew it somewhere else, have it on a specific corner, you you could do that as well. So thank you for spotting that. I had not seen that thin yellow line right there. So let's go ahead. All right, so we've got round 12. I'm going to slip stitch in the next stitch. There we are. And then chain one, single crochet in that same stitch as the last stitch. And you can go ahead and put a stitch marker in that first stitch here if you want to. Um, I don't find it to be quite as necessary here for these rounds, but if you're having trouble, it's definitely always an option. Then for this one, we'll single crochet in the next nine. So you can follow those numbers, or if you've used the stitch markers in your decreases, then we'll see those coming. So let's see here. I'm going to work a few stitches across. And then I'm going to watch for that decrease as well. You can see there's my decrease right there. So I've got one more, I think, but we can always double check our numbers with the pattern. So we've got the first one we made, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, we're in the right spot. There's our decrease right there. So we want to single crochet three together again. The stitch right before the decrease, the decrease, the stitch after the decrease. Yarn over, pull through. Well, we've got a new decrease. So I'll go ahead and put my stitch marker right in there. Then for round 12, single crochet in the next 10. Or until the stitch before the next marked stitch if you're marking your decreases. I really like using stitch markers in situations like this. It helps me stay on track, double check my numbers. Um, we all, you know, get distracted by life and other things happening at the same time we're trying to crochet. So Having stitch markers can be a really great way to just help you keep on track and avoid having to go back and frog and redo. Let's see. There's my next decrease. I hadn't marked that one yet. I've got one more stitch before. Now we're at the stitch before the decrease. So we yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull up a loop from all three of those stitches. Finish that one and we can mark that decrease. There we are. Now we repeat it. We've got 10 more single crochets here or till we get to the stitch before that next stitch marker because I do have that next one marked. We work our way across here. Almost there. All right. And then Let's see, we've got one more stitch before the stitch before. So we're at the stitch marker. There's a stitch right before the stitch marker. So we want to go into the one before. We can move that stitch marker out of the way now. The marked stitch, the decrease, and then the stitch afterwards. And then we can put our stitch marker right up there. So as I say, you've got lots of opportunities to customize this pattern. You can use color. You can definitely stop decreasing if it starts getting a little too small for your jar. Add more decreases if you need to to make the top of the jar a little bit smaller. 
or the top of your hat a little bit smaller for a smaller jar, I should say. Um, this is really such a great way to recycle jars you may have in your home, as well as, of course, the ubiquitous mason jars we all know and love. I don't know about you guys, but I t tend to guard my mason jars a little jealously. So being able to do something like this with a really pretty recycled jar, I think is a great way to um, reduce waste and, you know, make it something pretty and not have to give up your precious mason jars. So now we're coming up to this. Let's see, this would be our last corner here for this round. Got one stitch before the stitch marker, so I know I'm in the right spot. I'll pull up my first loop. Go ahead and put that stitch marker aside for now. Go into the decrease, pull up my second loop. Go into the stitch after, pull up that third loop. Yarn over and pull through to decrease again. And then we just continue. Oh, actually, we're back at our first one. That wasn't even a stitch. That was the slip stitch, but it worked out so well, I didn't even realize. There we are. There is our first stitch. We're ready to join with our slip stitch. So you can see now, hopefully, how much it really is starting to pull in there on the sides. And it's starting to get to be the right size for probably after round 12. That might be just about the right size for your wide mouth jar. So if you are making it for a wide mouth jar and you've if you've gotten to the point where it's going to be too small to decrease anymore, then you would want to jump to round 15 where you're working even. Again, those are going to be the rounds 15 and 16 that just sort of come straight down and cover that cap. Um, I don't know. Was that a was there a question I could answer here? I thought I saw something flash by, but I didn't get a chance to read it. Oh, sorry for the delay there. My computer just froze. <laughs> um, we have a comment from Monica asking, I think there's a flats shortage on mason jars for the centerpiece. Yes. Of yes. the lid rings in the USA. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that, that is also true. I was able to find actually some new rings just this week, and I definitely picked up um, a box of the wides and the regulars because they are they can be hard to get for sure i think a lot of people have gotten into canning so as i say it's a great opportunity to go ahead and recycle some other jars you know break out the spaghetti jars the salsa jars um you know just wash off that label and they'll they'll never know especially if you glue the lid on right glue this thing on a little bit around that metal edge and it will hide it forever and then of course you can fill it with all sorts of things and uh, you know whether that's candy or cash i think i know which ones my graduates would prefer but Lots of opportunities there. And as I say, a really simple pattern. So hopefully now that you've seen it, you kind of get an idea of how it comes together. You can adjust it to fit whatever jar or really whatever container you want to add a little graduation cap to. So thank you so much for joining me today. Again, that is the Lily Sugar and Cream Crochet Graduation Cap Mason Jar Topper. If you need to look that up, you can follow along with the uh, video here and definitely make this one your own with your own colors and celebrate your own graduate. So thank you so much, everybody. And if you have some graduates in your own family or you're graduating this year, a big congratulations to all of you. It's quite an accomplishment. So have a great day and thanks so much for joining me. All right, thanks everyone so much for joining us for another live community classroom with Michaels. Uh, don't forget to share your work with hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag yarnspo. That's Y-A-R-N-S-P-O. We can't wait to see you guys customize and make it up in your own colors. And just a reminder that you can find more classes on michaels.com and a recording of today's class at michaels.com slash classes. All right, enjoy your day. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.